Well, hey, folks, I am doing a whole man. I am so excited today. We got a new grill. Yeah, I hear you're saying, Tom, it's been at least a week or just a couple days since you've had a new grill. But we got one here today. This is very innovative, folks. From our friends at Char Griller, folks, the Otto Kamado. See that? Otto Kamado. You're saying, Tom, what's an Otto Kamado? So it's a Kamado grill. It's the original acorn right there. And they put a thermostatically controlled blower on it. And you're saying, what? And there's a control panel right there. You can set it to 225, set the vent where it tells you to set the vent. And you don't got to worry about it. It'll do everything for you. Uh, or, or say you want to get smoking hot, 700 degrees. Maybe you want to reverse here some steaks on here. Set it at 225, get your nice thick steaks up to about 100, 110 degrees. Pull them off, fire this thing up to 700 and sear on a cast iron grate because this still has a cast iron grate. Folks, there's a lot of interesting things going on here. Keep on watching, we're gonna put it together. I'm gonna to show you all those little interesting things. And I, I'll tell you what, I can, oh man, I can't wait to get going. All right, before we, we always look at the price, folks. So this is sold through Lowe's, and you can see it is 450 bucks. It's the same size as the other Kamado, uh, their Acorn, same size. Uh, but like I said, there's a whole things that are, that are different between this right there and that right there. And I'm gonna show you that and uh, we'll show you some of the more notable things that are different as we do the assembly. All right, so if you're wondering what the weight is, 112 pounds in the box. Take off the box and the packaging is probably really close to 100 pounds. All right, out of the box, there's a bowl uh, in the top as, uh, if you don't know more about the acorns uh, from Char Griller is that it is double walled insulated. So it does all the same things as a ceramic uh, Kamado would do except that it's a lot lighter and it won't break if you drop it. And a lot of people forget that then there's an inner tub in there too. It helps with the insulation. Uh, very stout legs, three-legged, um, obviously just like that one. Uh, there's a couple notable things that we want to look at. First of all, we always look at the blister pack. Kind of tells you how complicated assembly is going to be. And you see it's not going to be too bad. And if you notice, uh, there are no nuts in there whatsoever. I like that. That means there's a lot of pre-threaded connections that you're just putting a screw in. I like that. I like that a lot. Now, here's the side shelves. There's a controller right there. It's a little bit like the gravity, uh, but it is uh, the acorn, uh, but it's got a lot of the same. The buttons look to be almost the same as the, the gravity. Uh, one thing to note is that on the original acorn, you have folding shelves on uh, this. You do not. Those stay stay put so it's going to take a little bit extra space they do sell a um they do sell a cover just for this grill now let's take a look at a couple other things here you got your wheels over there um i just want to show you here here's your blower here's, here's your blower right, right in there here's your little blower and uh, those of you who are familiar with the with the chart with the 980 there's your uh there's your flapper so if you're wondering does this have a flapper there should be Yes, it does, has a flapper. And then what's really different here, and you're looking at this. So with this, I hope I got it in there. Uh, they have a ceramic, yeah, there it is. I got it covered with aluminum foil. They have a ceramic diffuser plate and you gotta buy that separately. But with this grill, part of the, uh, part of the operation is having this. Now they've not made it out of uh, ceramic. This is, there goes our action. Oh my gosh. This, and here's a magnet. I know it's not aluminum, so I'm pretty sure this is stainless steel and it is domed. And you can see it's got a specific way it goes in front and rear, but it's a uh, pretty thick gauge steel there. So th this is pretty heavy dude, I'm impressed with that. So um, ah, let's get putting it together. So this is why I like showing you people during assembly because you can really get down to how things work. So there is a blower and this is where the blower exits and it is below the charcoal grate. And uh, that is, that's a blower, and that's where the blower goes. So it is air down below, and that's what's fueling it. Now this whole gasket thing, if you're not aware of the uh, acorn, they have probably one of the most unique ways of getting the charcoal out. So that whole thing down there removes, and it's slotted, it's right, it's right there. And it fits into a slot that's right here, and then there's two clamps here that pull tight up against this gasket. Makes a very good seal and makes emptying the ash really easy. All right, so noticing one of the differences already. There's our ash catcher on, and we walk around it, and you see, if you're familiar with the other acorn, 
right there, it's got a vent in the bottom. So one of the first questions I had was, can, do you always have to have this thing plugged in? Do you always, and I, I'm starting to think that, yeah, you do, because that's gonna be your only supply of air since there is no bottom vent control in the Auto Kamado as compared to the regular Acorn. All right, coming together really nicely. You can see that's where your diffuser is gonna go toward the front. Uh, if you're wondering how this thing, how that controller knows what the temp is in the grill. So they, they do have a temp probe, there it is. What's nice about that, it's at toward the bottom of the lid. So it's pretty much gonna be a great height. So the temperature you're seeing there, even though it's on the exterior, uh, we'll have to take a closer look at where that lands up with that, because you're gonna have more heat coming out of there, here and there, as opposed to here. But in the end, you may see some fluctuations and when you first start up, but I think once you get going, everything kind of evens out in the grill. So that all, time will tell on that one. So that's the controller. It's, it's a lot like the Charger 980. Uh, you have your power button right here. You have uh, your temperature set button right there. Uh, you can set timers on there. Uh, here's for turning on your fan. You can turn the fan on separately, it looks like. And uh, to set the temp, you just go, like say if we're at 225, and then you press that and uh, now it's saying you can hear the fan is turned on. Now you got to remember on this grill, like the you got to take the um, see that lid there. That's where the grill is. You got to take that and put that lid down. And then uh, it's it told me D1, so it's saying the uh, has to be at you set your dial here to D1, and that's for your 225. So uh, I, I tell you what, let's take a look at the inside a little bit closer. All right, that's the noise the fan makes. I'm just leaving that run so you can hear it. Uh, everybody always asks about dimensions. This, I've always loved this top rack and how it slides out of the way from Char Griller. And that is uh, about 13 and a half inches across. And like I said, you don't have to use it. It just pulls right out like there and you can put it in either one of those positions. Uh, let's take a look. The Char Griller grate is, is cast iron and uh, they give you this removal tool with it. And you put that in there and you can take pull that out like that and uh, you can pull the whole grade out like that let's take a look right, at so it. like i showed you this is brand new the char griller the stainless steel um diffuser plate and it is bowed and i don't know if you can put it on like i guess you could put it on like that if you wanted to use that to uh, you put some water in there and catch your drippings uh yeah I, I think that would work or if you have an old char griller and you can see i got the uh great right there and you, you can get the, the char griller ceramic one now the only thing and the, the reason for that is that that's flat so you can put a drip pan on there but i would only use this for low and slow i wouldn't use it for hot and fast so if you're planning on searing some steaks i have a feeling that's why they went something like this because at uh, very hot remember there's a blower in there and it's a kamado so you got a blower and a kamado it's gonna get oh my gosh is it gonna get hot it's gonna get smoking hot so but if you're doing low and slow and you got one of these or you can get one of these it'll fit in there just fine and gives you the opportunity like i said to put a drip pan down there uh, you can see your charcoal grate i like about the charcoal grate from uh char -Biller. it is a uh, porcelain coated enamel so it doesn't rust and that blower is right underneath it. So there's going to be some questions about does it throw around uh, some ash? So you got to remember it's on the upper side. Let's take it out here. Oh, sorry. Everybody always wants to see. And it's not, they have it diffused. You, you, we saw the, the size of the fan. So it's not like a steady flow. There's, there's like a gentle breeze. That's how I would. So yeah. You know, we're gonna have to see if it blows the ash around. All right, folks, so, so far so good. We haven't fired it up yet. Uh, that'll be the next video. So keep on watching for that. Uh, but quality construction is good. I, I like some of the innovative things that we've got going on there. And remember, this is, a, this is a thermostatically controlled blower attached to a Kamado and it's all built in. And when you see the price, you know, very affordable uh, to have that built into a Kamado from Char Griller. Folks, I hope this was helpful. Leave your comments down below, thumbs up, and as always, appreciate you watching very much. Thank you.